This is a demonstration on how to do a pre-start check on a rotary mower. This particular mower is a Mountfield M64PD. It's a mower with a, a powered rear wheel, um, but it's a pedestrian operated mower. Uh, it is also able to do uh, mulching, it would have a mulching plate that goes in it which enables the grass clippings to be recycled and less, uh, left on the sward. So I'm going to take you through a basic pre-start check on this machine. What I'm doing on this machine is probably valid for a lot of other four-stroke uh, mowers, uh, but there will be some variation with manufacturers and their different engines. So it's very important that you consult the manual first before you carry out a pre-start check on your machine. The most logical way to do a pre-start check is to start at the front of the machine and work your way backwards so you know that you're not going to miss anything. Normally the pre-start check would be undertaken on the ground, but just to make it easier for this video we've put the machine up on a bench. So starting right at the front, the first thing we're going to be looking out for is the casing. In this particular bar we've got an alloy casing uh, and it's also then some plastic around this side. So what you'd be looking at is to make sure the casing is in good condition, there's no cracks in it or holes. Uh, if that is the case, then you need to not use the machine and report it to your supervisor. So just having a look on this one, the, the casing itself is fine, there's no cracks on it. Going around this side, you see here, yeah, the casing's it's a bit knocked in use, but that's fine. There's no obvious uh, problems in there. With the rotary mower, if you had holes in the casing, it would enable um, material to fly out at high speed. Um, material leaving a rotary blade can be travelling at 200 miles an hour, so you want to try and make sure your casing is in good condition to avoid accidents. The next thing we're coming to then is the wheels. Now on some uh, machines the wheel height is, uh, you have to adjust each wheel. This one in particular just has a single handle here, and you can see the height markings on the side there. So once you're on site you would then adjust the height according to the conditions or the cut height of the grass that you needed. As we then come on back here, we then come to the main engine. So before we do any maintenance, we just check that the spark plug uh, HT lead is removed. One good thing to find out on all machines is to find out where the exhaust is. In this particular instance, the exhaust is round here, okay, and the exhaust gases are expelled out the side. While you're using the machine, you need to be make, to make sure that you're not in a position where you're actually breathing in those fumes. Also, make sure the cover on the outside is in good condition because that is. So, uh, will prevent you from touching the exhaust. Uh, the exhaust can get up to 500 degrees uh, Celsius, so it's very hot, and the cover itself will get warm in operation as well. Moving back then, we then come to the main cover on the engine itself. Uh, we just need to make sure again that that's in good condition, uh, it's seated well, and there's no cracks or anything in that, and that uh, looks fine. The next thing we're going to look at then is the air filter, which is round on this side of the machine. Okay, so here's the air filter case. What we would do is just ping that off, take the lid off and have a look at the, uh, the, the filter. If we take the filter out, this filter is a paper filter. Okay, so if this got too dirty, then you would actually look at disposing of that and then purchasing a new one to go in uh, the machine. Maintenance on these really is just to give it a tap, get rid of any loose material that there may be in there. If you're not sure, if you think it's a bit dirty or whatever, again have a word with the supervisor and um, look at getting a new one uh, fixed into that machine. We'd also just have a look around the inside here just to make sure that that's not too dirty uh, and that's fine on that machine. So we then put it all back together again. Okay, so make sure that the filter fins are out. Drop the filter casing in put the cover back on and snap that back into place. So that's the filter checked on there. As we then work back along the machine, uh, the next thing we're going to come to is the oil filler cap. Being as it's a four stroke machine, you've got fuel and you've got a separate oil. So for oil, we just need to undo this. This will have a dipstick on the end of it. So you then want to have a piece of paper towel handy to wipe the dipstick because obviously as the mower has been moved around the oil will have sloshed around in the engine and won't give you an accurate reading. So if you take the dipstick out, put it on your towel and clean it, put the dipstick back in, close it down, put it back up again. and then you can actually have a look at the level on the dipstick. You 
can see some markings on here, so as long as the oil is above that uh, marking there, uh, that's okay. This probably has almost got a little too much oil in it, it's quite a way up the dipstick there, but that's, some of that could easily be drained out if need be. Also have a look at the colour of the oil. If the oil is quite black, then the machine may well need a service. This one has had a recent service and therefore the oil is in good clean condition. So I'm happy with that. Wipe that off again, drop it back in. And tighten up. Don't over tighten those, otherwise it makes it difficult for the operator to then take it out afterwards. The next one then, we've got the fuel filler cap on this side. Um, and we'll be looking at that when we take the machine outside, because we don't want to uh, have uh, petrol vapours in a building. The next thing we then come back to then is the starter cord. So we're going to pull the starter cord out and just check it. So pull it out until it's all out. And then we're just going to have a look at the cord itself to make sure that there's no knots, frays or uh, any other problems with the cord. That's looking fine. Just gradually feed it back in. You're also making sure that the recoil is working properly, that it's pulling the cord back in on its own because it's spring loaded and that's fine. If we look at the handle up here, this one is, goes around this spiral of metal here so when the operator is starting the machine he's not having to bend right down to the machine. The, uh, you can pull it from up there. On this one you want to make sure that that is uh, um, fairly tight on there, that's fine. If it was hanging down like that in operation then you would need to re-tighten the recoil. Okay, but that's, uh, that handle's fine there. So moving on back then on this machine we then come to some warning symbols on the back of the mower. Okay, so this is relating to the engine itself. So we've got uh, a, a, a yellow triangle with some flames in it. Obviously, um, you're dealing with combustible materials in regard to the oil and the fuel. Uh, the oil and the fuel. The hazard sign, just an exclamation mark in a yellow square, uh, that shows just a potential hazard. The next one is an open book, which is all about reading the manual. Make sure you've read the manual, you're familiar with the machine before you uh, you use it. And then also the last one is a picture of uh, some um, fumes around the face and that is, you know, beware of fumes coming from the, uh, the exhaust pipe itself. As we move back then on the machine, we then come to the various handles. This one has uh, some various knobs on the handles here, which means that the handles can be folded down for ease of transport. Obviously when the machine is, is in operation, we want to make sure that these are all fully tightened. Okay, so make sure those are fully tightened, don't over tighten them though. Make sure they're tight, nice and tight. Likewise the handles up here. A bit of adjustment to do on those. We're then going to work our way up looking at the cables. So obviously all the handles for this machine uh, are up at the top there. So we're just going to check the cables for frays, abrasions and things like that. Now some of these are plastic coated around then as, as a tightly wound spring and the cable runs in between those. So if there's some slight nicks on the plastic that's not going to uh, cause a problem with the operation of the machine. <clears throat> so I'm just going to run up here Check that they're okay, they look fine to me. The next thing we're going to check out then is the, uh, the grass box cover on the back here. Now we need to make sure that that will close back down. Okay, yes, that's spring loaded, that's fine. If we actually have a look in the back there, we need to check as well that the grass chute itself is clear, so there's no debris built up in there. Obviously when this machine was put away it should have been uh, cleaned uh, of any grass and build up of debris. Uh, if you're using a grass box, the grass box would sit on the back here and collect the arisings. If you're using a mulching plug, that would fit just into the base there to stop the arisings from coming up out the hole and will get recycled. On the back of here is also all the safety symbols in relation to this uh, machine, the mower itself. So we've got the hazard symbol, which is uh, you know, hazard, be aware of what's going on. The open book, again, read the manual. Uh, and then these two here, you read in parallel. <clears throat> so on this particular one, you've got a triangle with two spanners in it. So that's when you're doing maintenance, the next picture shows an engine and pulling the HT lead out. So that refers to basically removing the HT lead whenever you do maintenance on the machine. <clears throat> and the bottom one is another hazard symbol, and it's got pictures of fingers and toes being chopped off because you've got a sharp blade operating underneath. So you should never put your fingers underneath the blade when the, underneath the casing when the machine is working. Coming down here then, you've got a picture of a person with bits flying around it, so that's again beware of flying debris. And the next one is beware of operating near buildings, 
Okay, because again with these you can have stones fly and um, things like that. So you just need to be careful when you're actually using the machine itself. Moving up to the handles then here, we've got various uh, number of handles up here and we'll have a look at those when we're, uh, when we're outside. If I just turn the machine around I can show you the decibel rating and the other important information that's on the label here. Okay, so, so on the uh, label round here, you've got the decibel rating for the machine. Now the decibel rating that's stated on machines is not the one that we use for uh, ear defenders. Okay, this is a, a slightly different one, so you need to read the manual to check whether ear defenders are required. Obviously at, at uh, Moulton College the policy is that ear defenders are worn with all machinery. Also on this machine you will have the CE mark to show that the machine is approved for use in the, the European Union. It will have the date of manufacture. For manual handling purposes it will also have the weight um, featured on there as well um, as to you know, what the weight of the machine is and ideally if you're transporting this machine you would have two people to carry it. It also will have the manufacturer's details on there and the, uh, the number of the machine. So if you needed any spares for this machine you would quote the, uh, the, number, the um, model of the machine itself and also the detail on the, on the uh, label there so the manufacturer or the supplier will be able to provide you with the right sort of um, information and parts. One thing we didn't pick up, and we'll just go back to the front again, is the uh, spark plug. Now it's not necessary to remove the spark plug every time you do a pre-start check. You'd only look at removing the spark plug if there was a problem with the machine, because the spark plug can be used as a diagnostic tool based on the colour of the machine to indicate how well the engine's doing. So there's no need to remove the spark plug on there. So once you're pretty happy with your pre-start check, um, then uh, you'll need to then start the machine, make sure the handles are in operation, undertake refuelling in the machine and then you're ready to go. We've now relocated the mower outside where we'll carry on with our pre-start check. The first thing we're going to look at is the fuel level. First of all, identify the fuel cap on here. It has a picture of a petrol pump on it. All you want to do is give that a quarter turn, making sure your face is well away from it because that will release any pressure there may be in the tank. Carry on then to undo the cap and to just check if there's enough fuel level in there, you can just knock the machine. Uh, this has got about half a tank in there, so that will keep us going for today, so that's fine. So once you're happy with refueling, you can then just carefully put the, tack, the cap back on. Don't over tighten it. Whenever you're using, uh, dealing with the machine, it's ideal to wear a decent pair of rubber, rubber type gloves or latex gloves, just to stop your hands from getting too dirty. Very important when you're dealing with fuels, especially as they are uh, carcinogenic, they can cause skin cancer. You should never use um, deal with a machine and look at the fuels wearing leather gloves because the leather can absorb any waste fuel and uh, that can then obviously cause contact with your skin and can cause uh, allergic reactions and things like that. So I'm happy with the fuel, we checked the oil earlier on. So what we're now going to look at is uh, the handles. We come to the top of the machine and we've got a whole series of handles on this machine. The one on this side um, is uh, really it's sort of gears, it's got four speeds on this. Okay, so you've got uh, lower down there, that's slow, and then you can bring it back up for fast. You would use that once the machine is in operation, based on the type of terrain that you're doing, because it will basically affect the pace that the machine is going forward at. So obviously if you've got long grass or it's got uh, uneven terrain, you would be looking at using it on low speed. If you're on high, if you're on open areas where you're cutting only a short amount of grass, you could probably have it up on the high rating. So adjust that as you're, you're uh, using the machine. <clears throat> the one on the left hand side here then is the throttle controls. Uh, on here we've got a picture of a tortoise and a hare which is standard for slow and fast. At the top here we've then got a picture of two parallel lines with another sort of a butterfly valve shown in the middle. This shows the valve as being half closed, that's the choke. So what we do when we start the machine off first off, first off we would pull the lever right back to engage the choke. Once the machine has started we can then drop that down on the throttle and then start the machine or either start the machine again or just drop it down for the machine to go into idle. <clears throat> on this machine then we've got then two more handles to the back here. First of all we need to check that these will um, come into operation by pushing down and they spring back on their own. If there's a problem with those you shouldn't use, use the machine. Likewise this one under here, that's fine. <clears throat> the 
top uh, bar here has got stop on it and a picture of a circle with two lines going around it or two arrows. This one is like the throttle control lock or the operator lock, sometimes referred to as the dead man's handle. So to actually start this machine, we've got to have that held down in the on position. On this particular machine, that also means that the blades will be circulating, the blades will be going round. The handle underneath here is to engage the drive on the wheels. So obviously once we're starting the machine, we don't want to be pulling that in, otherwise the machine will take itself off when we start it. So we leave that, that down, but we have to engage this. It's also another reason why the starting handle is up here, because it then becomes more difficult to actually hold that down if you're having to bend down and start the machine from there. So we're now going to go through and start this machine. So the first thing we need to do is to put the spark plug back in, or the HT lead back on the spark plug. in there okay. <coughs> As we've not started this machine yet today we need to engage that it fully into the, uh, the choke position. <coughs> As I say because although the decibel rating on this is below the legal limit for ear defenders the college policy here is that we wear them. So we'll put these on first. <coughs> we'll then hold this handle down and then give it a start. So we started the machine in the choke position, it fired first time, and then I then just dropped the revs down there, and then to stop the machine it was just a case of releasing this handle. So we know the machine starts, and we're happy with that. <coughs> the final thing we'd want to look at is the, uh, the blade underneath. So I'll just remove my chock, <coughs> remove the HT lead again, and then when you tip a machine over, you always need to tip it off, uh, so that the fuel filler cap remains uppermost because the fuel filler cap has got a breather pour in there. If you turn it over this way then the fuel will run out. So on this particular one we're just going to turn the machine gently over that way. Just rest it there. So let's have a look at the underside of the machine. Here we've got our rotary blade. Uh, whenever you're dealing with the blade underneath it's very important to have a pair of gloves on. So the first thing we're going to look at is to make sure the blade is firmly fixed under here. Just holding the spindle, moving the blade. There's no movement on the blade at all there. You saw a bit of sideways movement, that's it just operating on the spindle. Here you've got the, uh, the, the belt here which connects the drive from the engine to the rear wheel drive. Okay, so again with that we're just going to make sure that's in good condition. Okay, just gently push that away from you. Take it round. Yeah, there's no problems at all with that belt. There's no sign of stiffness or resistance on there. Looking at the blade itself then, this is the cutting edge of the blade here and here. As that's spinning round, it's an impact type of cut, so it's like hitting a nettle with a cane. It's a, it's a cut that way, so the blade doesn't need to be perfectly sharp. These ones we will take off at the end of the season and sharpen up. On the backs of the blades here, you've got these slight um, uh, tongues that go up slightly, and that is to help um, spin the grass round and eject it, and also if you've got the mulching plate on, it enables the, uh, the grass to be pushed down back into the grass sward to hide the arisings. Again, while we're under here, we'll just check the inside of the casing is okay. Um, you, you know, this type of debris on here should have been cleaned off after its last cut. Occasionally you could put a pressure washer on here just to clean it. The last thing to look at as we under here is this assembly here, which is part of the rear wheel drive. As we've pointed out, the belt comes through here into a gearing mechanism uh, in there and operates the wheels. So we just need to run through here, check, check there's no obstructions there, everything looks okay, the casings are in good condition. Uh, I'm happy with that there, so we can turn the machine back over. You may have noticed we've put the, also put the grass box on the back. Again, with that one, you would just check the grass box as that's in good condition. There's no holes in the fabric around the back because you don't want the debris coming back at you. So we've been through this machine. We've started at the front. We've worked our way back. We've checked the different parts of the engine. We've checked the fuel. We've checked the oil levels. Uh, we've checked that the, uh, the cables and all that are working. We've started the machine. We've stopped the machine. And uh, I'm happy now that we've carried out the pre-start check on this machine and this machine then is now suitable for going out and mowing grass.